What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's video we're going to be modeling this tower inside of Revit. I guess you can say it's a tower with a twist. Okay, uh, I, uh, moving forward, <laughs> uh, I don't really know how to pronounce the name, so I'm just going to leave it here. So that's the name of the tower. Uh, one of my subscribers actually left a comment uh, asking me, can I model this building, and I thought, yeah, well, it's cool. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So it is a little bit challenging. I tried multiple approaches and I figured out the, the best solution, at least in my opinion. So I'm going to be sharing that with you in this video. Now, if you want to learn more about modeling these complex structures inside of Revit, I actually have a full dedicated course just on the topic of uh, massing, massing environment, and uh, creating these complex shapes in Revit. It's available on my website, so I'm just going to include the link to that in the description of this video below and also up in the cards above. So make sure to check it out. There you can find all of my Revit courses. I've got over 130 hours of content and I'm adding more each month. Uh, you can also check out some of my uh, custom uh, Revit templates, so ready to go Revit templates. We have some really high quality Revit families and also there is a plugin which you might find interesting. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are at Revit's homepage, so I'm just going to go here to new to start a new project and then I'm just going to go to, uh, for the template, I'm going to be using just the default metric template. Here you can see I've got some of my uh, customized templates. As I said, if you want to check those out, I'm going to be leaving a link to that just up in the cards above right now. Okay, so let's just use the default one so everybody can follow along. And then uh, here, as soon as Revit starts up, we're going to be modeling this as a uh, in-place mass. So let's go here to massing in site, uh, turn on show mass so we can actually see the mass. And then we just need to go here to in-place mass. Uh, it's going to ask us, asks, ask us for a name, so I'm just going to call it mass1, and now we can get started. So I'm just going to create a rectangle, so a simple rectangle on the ground. Uh, select one of the sides by hovering over the side, and then hit the tab key once, so it highlights only the side, and then you can assign a length here. So I'm just going to go with 10,000 for 10 meters, and let me just here quickly change the units. So. I'm just going to change this to meters because I find it easier to work in meters, especially in this kind of conceptual stage of the design. Uh, then here we're going to go with 16 and then hit enter, there we go, and that's it for now. Uh, go to the 3D view, zoom out a little bit, select that rectangle and hit create form. Uh, so it's going to extrude it like this and here we want to enter the height, so the height value, and I'm going to go up to 55 meters for this first form. Uh, then I'm just going to select this thing and uh, then go back into level one, make sure to select the entire thing in the 3D view, then you go to level one and then you just want to copy that. So you just go here to copy, CO is the shortcut, and then you just want to copy it here, grab it here, and then copy it up to this point here. So this is basically how that uh, building looks like. There we go, perfect. And then for the second one, you just wanna select the top face and then uh, enter a value here of 70. So one of these rectangles is a little bit higher than the uh, other one. Okay, so once we have all of this in place, now it's time to create our shape. So how are we going to be doing that? So let me bring up an image here. So I have an image, uh, this is just from, I think, Arc Daily. So this is basically how that's constructed. So we're, uh, I, my first idea was to go with a void. So I tried to kind of carve this out, but Revit did not want to comply with that. So I figure out this second approach. So I'm just going to be showing you that. So what you wanna do is you wanna jump into one of the elevations and let's say we're going to be working on a smaller shape first. Uh, you wanna go here to reference plane and then have one reference plane kind of marking the, the beginning of that twist and then you wanna have another one here marking the end of that twist. So usually you wanna have them like this, like the same distance from the ground and from the top. So let's go nine meters on the bottom and then let's say we wanna go nine meters at the top. 
kind of have it equal like so. Okay, so once we have these in place, actually, let's go down to seven just to give us a bit more space. Okay, uh, so once we have all of these in place, then I'm just going to go here to reference plane, add one in the middle, and then add two in the middle there. So in total, we're going to be having uh, five of these. Yeah. Okay, so once we have all of this in check, uh, now it's time to name these. So I'm just going to be using a simple approach. So this one's going to be number one, this one's going to be number two, this one's going to be number three, this one's number four, and then this one is number five. Oops. Okay, so once we have all of this in place, let's then go back into the 3D view and now let's start. So what you wanna do first is you want to create this uh, kind of spline shape across the side. So across the front of the building and then across the side of the building. So let's do that first. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing here and actually here when I look at it, I think I've <laughs> drawn this Kind of a little bit wrong so I need to move this so let me just go here to the move tool and just move it like this so I think the the smaller one should be in the back there we go so we're looking at it like so okay perfect uh, so now you want to go to set work plane and let's set uh, the work plane at level or reference plane one uh, and then you want to go to show work plane so we can just see where that is okay perfect so once we have that in place then I would like to go here and just create a simple line across this surface. See, we have uh, a simple line there. Uh, then I wanna create a simple line at the top. So again, set work plane, reference plane number five. So that's the top. And then again, a simple line just like that. So that's in line with that reference plane, perfect. Okay, so once we have uh, this in place, uh, now uh, we wanna select set the work plane to be this face here, just like so. Uh, then I'm just going to run a quick diagonal line like this on that surface, and then I'm going to switch to the arc tool. Uh, but before we do that, you wanna go here and then just start a simple line segment like so, just from wherever up to this point. Then you wanna switch to arc, but tangent and arc. You click there to kind of continue that, and then you find the midpoint of this diagonal. Then you click there, and then you go to the other side. So this is going to give you two arcs that are going to create kind of a spline across this line, but it's not going to be a spline, it's going to be an arc, and that just gives us a bit more functionality. Okay, so having done that, uh, I can come in here and I can actually delete this line because I need, no longer need it. And then I have to basically repeat this on the other side. Uh, so just go to set work plane, uh, then go to reference plane one. Uh, and then here you wanna have a line that goes like that. So just across, uh, then you wanna go all the way up to reference plane five, and then just have that line going across. And again, we wanna have that diagonal line, but first we have to set the reference plane here to the face and create that diagonal line like so. Okay, so having done this, uh, now I can go back here to my uh, tangent and arc. But first, as I said, first start with a line. So just a line like so, and then the tangent arc will work, uh, will actually do its job. So go from there, oops, not that one, the tangent one, there we go. Okay, and then up to from here to here. Perfect. And then we can just use the tab key uh, to select this individual line and delete it. And also remember to select this line segment here and this line segment here and delete both of those. Okay, so once we have these two splines, this is basically the shape where we want to kind of carve away uh, part of this building. So that's what we want to achieve. So how do we do that now? Okay, so the next step is going to be to create the lines connecting these two on those reference planes that we have created. So let me show you. Uh, the easiest one is going to be the middle one. So let's do that one first. So I'm just going to go to set to work plane uh, to the middle one, which is three here. And then you just go to the line tool. And then here you can see it's easy because it's going to snap to the end point or to the kind of midpoint of that spline or end point of those two arcs. And then you can find the same thing here. 
Did I do that right? No, I did not. Okay, so let's try that again. So it can be a little bit tricky. So we can test that here. Okay, so if this is being tricky, uh, what you can do is you can come to the edges here and then just run this across. And then you should, oops. Okay, let's see what's going on there. So it's not giving us the proper spot here, unfortunately. Uh, and that's okay. So let's just do it kind of like that. Kind of figure out the line there, or let's just mark it like so. And then I'm just going to repeat the process here on the face. Again, it's not giving me this line, which I find a little bit annoying. So let's just, uh, yeah, let's just leave these two lines as is. So what I'm going to do now, uh, just so I can actually find the stop spot better, uh, is I'm just going to go here to trim and extend. So let's find trim and extend to corner, and then I should be able to grab these two. There we go, perfect. And then I should be able to do the same thing here. Perfect. And then the line that we're looking for is this line that connects these two. Here we have a triangle, we can just leave it as is for now. So I know this seems like uh, completely weird at this point and we're 11 minutes into the video, so you're probably thinking, well, what's going on? Uh, don't worry, we're going to have the shape done really soon. So let's now continue and let's go up. So let's set the work plane to reference plane number four. So let's go here. Uh, and then again, I'm just going to go off to the side and just create a line that goes like so. There we go. And then the same thing in front. So just like that. Okay, so once we have this in place, again, we can use trim and extend to just find that corner like that and like this. Okay, and then we wanna connect these two points. So we're doing just some geometry here and then we can just delete this one or let's just leave it as is, I don't care. Uh, I'll show you later on how we uh, actually use this. And then finally, let's do the bottom one. So set work plane, that's number two. So that one is here. And again, uh, you just wanna come off to the side here, run a line to here and then to here. Okay, and then again, we're just going to be using the trim and extend to corner to fix it like so. And then we just wanna connect these two like that. Okay, so now, believe it or not, we're actually almost there <laughs> at completing this part of the building. So let me show you what the next step is. So what you wanna do is you wanna actually transform this from a triangle into a, uh, basically a profile of this building. So you want to use the tab key to select individual lines and then you can either um, trim and extend them or you can just go like this like I am uh, just selecting it and then flip it and get around like so and then you just want to go to individual lines and kind of complete this shape. So basically that's what we want to see. Uh, now we can see, uh, we can select these diagonal ones or these kind of arc ones and we can delete those. Then again here, it's the same thing, but let's just switch to this reference plane. So let's go here to set reference plane and go to reference plane number three. Okay, so here uh, we repeat the process. So I'm just going to select this and then flip it to the other side, like so, select this one flip it to the other side. Uh, and then finally, let's just use the lines to uh, kind of complete this shape like that. Okay, and then we're going to be going up. Uh, reference plane five, nope, not five. Uh, I wanted four. Okay, I know it's thinking, taking a little bit long, but I think it's worth it to see everything step by step. And you just connect it there and yeah we have everything so we can just uh, delete these two lines like so and then just kind of complete the entire profile of the building like that so now we have all profiles uh, here at the bottom i can just uh, reference plane one i can just complete that profile too Okay, so the next step is going to be to actually destroy this shape. Now, uh, 
might sound a little bit drastic, uh, don't delete it. Uh, you want to go here and dissolve that. Then you want to select this uh, point on the top, delete that, point on the bottom, uh, delete that one as well. Uh, then what you want to do, oh, okay, I didn't complete this one. So set work plane, reference plane five, and then let's just complete that one. Uh, now here I don't have everything, so it's going to be a bit more difficult, but not too difficult. Okay, so I think we now have everything. And then finally, just to complete everything, you have to just create a blend of all of this, but it's not going to work. Uh, the reason for that is because, uh, well, here we have uh, basically a rectangle and then here we have, uh, a, well, five sides. Is that a pentagon or no? It's just a five side shape. So Revit doesn't like that. So what you have to do is here, let's go to split element and make a small split on this line just at the edge, so just like that. Just a small split there, on the bottom as well, small split here. So instead of uh, four sides or four lines, here we now have five lines with this small line segment here. And then the same thing goes on the top. So here, split this one just at the edge, and then you wanna do the same thing here with this one just near the edge. Perfect. So once we have all of that in place, I can turn off this show reference plane. Uh, then you want to select the bottom two and then go to create form. There we go. Then the top two, go to create form. Uh, then you want to select, go like this. So select the bottom, select this one and this one and go to create form. And then you want to select the bottom here, hold the control key, select this one and then hold the control key and select the bottom here and go to create form. And there we go. And then finally, we just have to join geometry this together, just like that. And here we go, we have our shape. Uh, and of course, you can now apply curtain walls or whatever you want to this shape. Uh, and then obviously, you can repeat the same process on the other side to create well the other side of this building. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to get this Revit project file, so this Revit project file, as well as any of my other Revit project files, you can find those on my Patreon page, which I'm going to be linking up just below this video in the description, and then also up in the cards above. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.